Hi, Keith McGuinness here. In this short video tutorial, I'm going to look at a relatively new option in PAST, which is useful for telling us about taxa or species that change between control and impact locations. This is the design I'm using. I have samples at two impact locations and matching control locations. So I'm labeling these as impact locations, coded as one, and these as control locations, coded as two. And these are my top or northerly sites, which I'm uh, coding as site one, and these I'm coding as site two. And remember, I'm doing that in order to pair up or match up control and impact locations. So I've copied the data over here into PAST and I've already coded the impact locations with red and the control locations with blue. And I have selected the abundances of all the taxa. So I've selected all the taxa and all the samples, but I'm excluding the environmental variables and the summary biological variables. So over to the multivariate menu and right down here to SIMPA. SIMPA stands for similarity percentage. So let's run that and see what it means. Just enlarge that a little bit. Now you can see I've got two panels up here where I can select two groups to compare. If you've got more than three groups coded, so say you've got high impact, moderate impact, and low impact, then you pick two to compare and you look at these results in terms of pairwise comparisons. Distance similarity measure I'll use for biological data is always Bray Curtis, and that's the default. And then down here, I've got the taxa or species in my samples, along with a set of columns of information. Now, the last two columns are relatively simple. It's mean abundance in impact versus control locations. So for worm eight, remembering E03 means move the decimal place three places to right. Worm Eight has a mean abundance at impact locations of 1,630 and at control locations of 3,630. So there's quite a large change in abundance from impact to control, or perhaps I should say control to impact. Crustacean number two goes from 2,420 at control to around about 800 at impact. So the information over in the last two columns is relatively easy to interpret. If we go now to this column here, cont contribution percentage. Worm 8 is, has a contribution percentage of 11.7%. Now what does that mean? That is the amount that this, con this species, this taxa, contributes to distinguishing impact and control sites. As these percentages are listed in decreasing order, worm eight is the one that is most responsible for distinguishing impact samples and control samples. And that of course is due to its different abundance in those samples. Crustacean number five is the next most important with about 9.4%. And again, that's based on the differences in abundance. If we scroll all the way down, we'll see that the bottom tax are here, the tax are at the bottom of the list, are contributing very small amounts to distinguishing control and impact. And if you look at the differences in abundance, you'll see that's why. The bottom one, 17.3 at impact versus 21.3 at control. So doesn't really change in abundance very much. Now, if you look at the next column, cumulative percent, you'll see that 
adds up at the bottom to 100%, because if we take into account all the taxa, all the species combined, they contribute 100% to differences between control and impact, even though some of them contribute overall very little. So right back up to the top. The top list of species here then are the ones that are most responsible for distinguishing control and impact sites. If I look at that block there, that's the first six species on the list. It's a selection of worms and crustaceans, three of each. Altogether, those six species combined account for 50% or over 50% of the differences between impact and control locations. The other 24 species contribute the remaining 49 and a bit percent. So six out of the 30 species are responsible for the major part of distinguishing control and impact. So if I'm looking for indicator species, or species which are really changing in response to this particular impact, it's those species that I'm going to look at. Um, finally, over here, the average dissimilarity column, that's the average dissimilarity in Bray Curtis terms for that particular taxa when taken across all control impact comparisons. And if you look at that, 3.9 the overall average dissimilarity between control and impact is 33.8. That 3.9 is about 12% of that 33.8. So that's where this value of 11.7 .7 comes from. And going down the average dissimilarity, by the time you get to the bottom here, mollusk number two, the difference, uh, its average dissimilarity is very tiny. So that's SIMPA, similarity percentage, and it's very useful to give you an idea of what the main taxa are that are responsible for differences between sets of sites. And you do it, you use it on a pairwise basis for sites grouped according to colour codings over here. The last thing I'll mention here is that we can tell from this that the species or taxa that are most important in distinguishing control and impact are typically the ones that are most abundant at the control sites and they're dropping in abundance most at the impact sites. In some analyses and in some situations before people do Bray Curtis and do these kinds of analyses they might do a transform on the species abundances, such as a square root. And the aim of that is to make the most abundant species less important. So if I did that on this data, perhaps some of these species would drop in importance and some of the other species would increase in importance. Because there are not very, very large differences in the abundances of the species in this data set, I prefer to work with the untransformed data, uh, and it also means that these numbers here are directly interpretable as average abundances at control and impact locations. In other situations, people might prefer to do something such as square root transform. Okay, that's an introduction to SIMPA. It's really quite useful for seeing which taxa are really the ones that are coming up as different between sets of locations such as control and impact.